this is how I know the story ends. All right. Pete Fogel keeps bumping you, bumping you, bumping you, and then you, the last guy, uh-huh. you're supposed to go on like fifth or sixth, and he's yeah. like, I'll, oh, sorry. And you're like, you forgot me, bro. And yeah. he's like, all right, I'll bring you up next. And then he brings up someone else, someone yeah. else. And then I remember Charles Fleischer, I think, yeah. closed the show. <laughs> Fuck. The voice, dude, of Robert Ra- yeah. the voice of Robert, uh, Roger Rabbit, uh, Charles Fleischer. And Charles Fleischer does like a fucking uh, hour. Yeah. And then he goes to close the show, and you go, hey, man, you forgot about me, dog. And then he goes, all right, all right, uh, I'm going home. Please welcome Willie Barsena. That was your introduction. Willie walks on stage, shakes Pete Fogel's hand, and headbutts him in the face. Uh-huh. And the guy goes down and takes a knee, and uh-huh. Willie just grabs his mic and goes, hey, how you guys doing tonight? He just goes into his set. He fucking headbutted the MC in the face. You're not proud of this story. You no, should be. Brother, you, you know, should be. The bro. listeners right now are going, I am going to see this guy in Atlanta no, at I the Improv be, I May 2nd, May 3rd, May 4th. Yeah, that was that was before uh, all that uh, therapy, bro. But, no, but uh, he earned it. It's all what yeah. we wish we could do. You know, a lot of comics, you know what? Probably more than 20 <laughs> comics uh, said that guy was a dick. You, you picked know, the like, perfect like, guy like, to okay, do it. Okay, put it this way. Uh, like it, out of all the years, not one guy has said, uh, up, oh, that was, you know, that's a good guy, like if man. If you headbutted David Gee, you know, he MCs down there all the time. He does like Vince Scully impressions. <laughs> he, he, yeah, yeah. Like David if you headbutted Gee. him, oh, no. I would say to you like, yeah, you're a some, fucking what's asshole. What's the matter with you? That's yeah. Geezer, man. He's the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David or like, you know, like, no. uh, you know, any of those. Any of the right. good guys. I, I get you, bro. But you know what? There's a, there's some scummy motherfuckers in our business, bro. You know it. I mean, I don't know. You know, you don't want to put it out there, but there, there, there's just some people that are just, they're just not good people, man. They're they're willing to sell well, their mo- mothers comics. to be famous. They're not very good comics. Yeah, and 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 they're willing to sell their their, their, their souls, man. To me, I, I I never I was never willing to sell shit or or I steal am. anything. You know, no, I, I'll sell my soul to a network. No. I got, I'm, I'm sucking from the corporate dick as long as humanly possible. All right. I, I got kids. I got a nice house. I'm on the west side, bro. Right, right. I'm a yep. block from the bro, ocean. I, I when that radio I, station yeah. goes, hey, man, I need you to meet the guys from, uh, you know, you know, uh, fucking Chevy. I'm like, right. all right, how long? Two hours. What do you want me to do? I'll, t- I'll take them out to lunch. Whatever all right, it well, takes. Uh, well, I'm learning those skills, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to do that. Starting I to will, be- Daryl Wright. Uh, was on the podcast and he, somebody had beef with Daryl Wright and he goes, "Well, if there's a mic, let fuck don't. I'm not talking shit. If there's a mic, I will bury him at his own family reunion in front Darryl. of us." And I was like, "You know what? That's what I'm going to say from now on." Anybody <laughs> on beef, like everybody likes to talk shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, you know what? There's a, as long as there's a mic, let's do it. You know what? Let the I, people it, know. It's funny you say about Daryl Wright. I turned him on to one of the books because i read so many books bro and I, there's one book that really ch- changed me and i had him read it i go dude i went actually took him to barnes and nobles and bought I didn't it daryl could read <laughs> Fucking no, bro, drunken daryl hey, hey, he, he can read vodka bro. time no that's my so, homie so so yeah uh i took him we actually went to the bookstore and we were working the road together and i bought it i, I go look man this you know it's for you dude or or no it could have been another comic but i know he got it <laughs> But I you bought know, my bad. It was no, Godfrey. you know what it is. It was Godfrey. My you, bad. You know what it is. I bought. I I I bought that book. About, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I bought it. Uh, what was to, it for about four or five comics, bro? Moby Dick. <laughs> yeah. It no, was, what's the no, book? No, it's called Feeling Good. It's oh, called a book called Feeling Good, and it's for people that just have uh, anger issues, man. Oh, then I don't. Need yeah, it. you don't need that. I got no it's idea. people that get pissed off. Uh, uh, that let life, the past, fuck with them. Yeah. You know, like anything that happened in your childhood. Feeling or uh, feel in? Feeling. Okay. Feeling. I-N-G. Because yeah. uh, uh, these listeners will go by yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a great book, bro. You stand by it. Yeah, dude. Daryl read it, and he and then he, he was in Vegas, and he, and he called me, and he goes, dude, I, I just read, finished the book. It, it's, oh, it's, my. You know what I just realized? What's that? Daryl had a situation about his podcast, The Right Turn. And you have a podcast which we want to mention. Yeah, no, I don't have to, have to mention. What, what, what would happen? What no, happened, Daryl? You're, you're my guest. It's, yeah, okay. What's the name of your podcast? It's called um, like, Gotta Be Honest. Gotta Be Honest. Yeah, Gotta Be Honest. And that's Willie Barsena. Gotta Be Honest podcast. And if, uh, give it a listen. I have not listened to Willie's podcast. Look, here's the great thing about this show. If I tell these people, yeah. you gotta go fucking do it. Like, they gotta go see you do stand-up. 
because I've seen you and you're great. Right. But uh, I don't. I, I my record is impeccable. I've never steered them wrong. All right, like right. go Thank by you. fight Thank is hard you, by Sam Sheridan. Go listen to the Black Crows, Southern Harmony Music Companion. It'll fuck your head up. Go do this. Go to that, and they'll go. No, thank you, brother. Uh, thank so, you, like, man. So, like, Willie, go see stand up. But, like, for all I know, your podcast sucks. And but I will say this: my friend <laughs> and a great comic, Willie Barsena, yeah. has a podcast. Right. If you want to check it out, right. I mean, it's free country. Do your thing. R- right. Right. <laughs> no, I, 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 you know. But he's got a website, no, WillieBarsena.com. No, no. dot com. So, uh, uh, Daryl Wright got oh. into a situation up at Universal City Walk. Okay. Where guys were fucking really getting in his shit. And it was about podcasts, and podcasts can lead to a great deal of money if you play your cards right and do it right, right and get enough subscriptions and stuff. Right. And uh, got like guys that were like his friends kind of turned on him and were talking. Something happened where other guys were doing his, his friends were uh-huh. doing his podcast without him. Oh, man. And like, yeah, fuck Daryl Wright. Like saying it on the Right Turn <laughs> podcast. And that guy, I bet it's because he read your book, Feeling All Right. Hey, feeling good. Feeling good. Yeah. He. Just took his shit, got on a bus, and went to Vegas and stayed with a friend for two months because he knew his anger issues. He couldn't be around those people. Yeah. I bet you money it's because of the book Feeling Good that you made him read. Well yeah. done, sir. Because he's a felon, well, too. He's got yeah, one Yeah, yeah. He, he's got a bullet wound in his mouth. That's why it looks like that? <laughs> with that yeah, fucking you know that? keeper teeth? You didn't know that, Jay? No. He's got, yeah, if you look at his cheek, it's, it, it's in and out. I mean, he got shot in the face. Oh, he did tell me. Gangster style, bro. I mean, he, he shot looked... a crackhead in the ass. <laughs> yeah. He's got crazy. Oh, stories. yeah. He's got stories, bro. I told him, I go, if I ever see you doing crowd work, I'm coming on stage, I'm kicking you right in your ass. And he goes, what, dog? <laughs> well, I, play... I go, bro, you have the it's greatest story. story. Yeah. You shot a crackhead in the ass, and you're asking the audience, what te- football team do you like? Who gives a fuck? Tell me about what jail is like, you idiot. <laughs> yeah. And, and he, he used to really have a bad stuttering problem. Really? Like really like severe. So maybe he should keep drinking. No, no. So no, Probably now he's it. he's smooth now, man. He's a great storyteller. Yeah. Uh you had more sisters than brothers growing up, Willie Barsena? Two sisters. At Willie Barsena? At Willie Barsena. Yeah, two sisters. So there's three kids in your family too? Yeah, yeah. I'm same, in the middle. Same as your family. Yeah, yeah. That's good. We, but it's all, we have, I just have all boys. But it's, uh, yeah, I have, well, I have. Having boys is fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I'm kind of glad I don't have a girl. You know, no, <laughs> Every guy you I know, know that has a girl, they're like, it's nothing like it. I'm like, keep telling yourself that. Yeah. You know you want a boy. <laughs> yeah, that's why they end up being like badass uh, softball players, you know? Yeah, she, come, on, like, come on, come on, baby. Keep your eye on the ball, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in front of it. Um, but, like, yeah, who wants to go to the beach with three dudes when you could be teaching a girl to wipe no, front to back? You know what it is? I, I, I think guys that 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 get daughters, they um, you have to be a certain. You, I don't know, man. It's so boys are so much easier. My buddies have daughters, and They're we'll stupid. go. Stupid. You can make mistakes we'll, with them. They don't notice. No, no, no. Listen, we'll, we'll, my buddy will go to a restaurant and uh, and he'll sit there with his daughters. And they'll be like, okay, they want a, a hamburger, but no pickles, and the other one, no mayo, and you know, and, and then everything's picky, man. I mean, I mean, you know, and then I'll just be like, three cheeseburgers, and whatever you don't want, take it out. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, with boys, that's how it is. You know. I say in my show too, if you have boys, you can so get out. You say you can yell, get out of the house, and don't even come back till I tell you. Right. They don't even know they're in trouble. Yeah. They just leave. Right. And the baby's naked. You let a naked baby out of your house. And they come back an hour later, and you're like, where were they? They look like they're at a Civil War reenactment. They're, wet. they're right. soaking wet from here down, from like the chest down, they're right. wet. Yeah, they're yeah. dripping wet. The baby's dragging a prosthetic leg up the street. The middle kid's holding dog shit in his hands. And you're like, yeah. where were you guys? And like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. And they don't know. They're yeah, dumb. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> No, no, I, I, I love it, man. Then my you my boys, the oldest in the face. No, 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 my boys are Fogel. my boys. Believe it or not, my boys are sweet, man. They're nice. They were into MMA forever. Like, you know, I know that you, you. I love. Yeah, it. yeah. We started before when I had a tap out sticker in my car. This, this is how long. Put it this way: I used to do radio in Sacramento. I had Randy Couture on, on, on my show. I swear, bro, I was going, we have Randy Couture here. This is before that whole spike, before UFC went on spike, before any of that. And I said, we got Randy Couture here, man, blah, blah. I was pumping him up. This guy just, he, had, he, he you know, was talking about his record, and, and, you know, uh, what he's done and, and, and how he was. He started off as a wrestler. He was, he was an Olympic wrestler. Yeah. And at the time, he just, you know, he had a, 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 a few fights, MMA fights. But he used, he, people already knew he was a beast. They already ca- called him Captain America. Anyways, bro, nobody called, man. And then when, when we cut to commercial, he goes, 
he, Randy Couture tells me, hey, Willie, in Japan, I'm huge, man. They I go, are, yeah, you, yeah. you know, but that's how it, 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 hadn't, too. it hadn't been introduced to, to the yeah. U.S. yet. I mean, that's how long ago my kids were. Are well, they into the MMA, your kids? They, no, they, 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 two years ago, uh, no, three years ago, they, when, uh, my friend said, hey, if they stick with baseball, I can help you get in, get, get them into a good school oh, in right, college. Right. So then, so, long so we had a meeting with my wife and the kids and then, and they, uh, at that point, they all, they, they, they had the decision, you know, okay, we're just going to do baseball, you know, but they used to, they used to get, they used to do, uh, jujitsu with, uh, with, uh, the Machados who are, the Gracie's first cousins. Yeah. 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 They used to be with Hajir and then, and then they used to do Muay Thai with Edmund, uh, and Glendo Fighting Club. Muay Thai's no joke. Yeah. They did. You they, got some they, crazy fight. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and Edmund trains, trained that girl, the one that just won the UFC. Ronda Rousey. Oh, Ron- Edmund. Yeah. Yeah. They're in Glendo. Yeah. They're in Glendo. Yeah. yeah. Edmund. Uh, she was on the podcast and Edmund, she would just come from training and, uh, she was getting, she was just, she was a month out of her last fight with Liz Carmouche. Uh, Ronda Rousey it was when she was on more stories yeah. and she was at 150 she was cutting to 135 and her roommate Marina her training partner just made her kale and spinach soup with like one piece of chicken in it and that was her meal yeah she trains like a beast bro she She's, trains like a beast cause I, I um her trainer so funny cause Edmund I know the name cause he, she's yeah, like, he, tell he, Edmund they'll call him back yeah yeah he trained he'll tell you bro, if you ever get a chance to, to, to interview him cause he's He's trained a lot of Muay Thai guys, uh, MMA guys, uh, and boxers. He's got a, he's got a kid that's a champ, but but uh, he'll tell you about my boys. He, he goes, he goes, dude, because you were crazy, dude. I've never seen kids do what your kids did, because they would go there, dude, and they would fight every one of his, you know, fighters. And, See, and, I got my ass whooped as a kid, obviously, because yeah. I ran my mouth. And you just told stories about getting your yeah. ass whipped. And when we were growing up, and a kid came, my oldest boy, Jackson, mm-hmm. is a green belt around the corner here. Okay. And he's really good. He likes it a lot. And the baby, who's only two, he's just going to be a fucking pro wrestler. He looks like one of the oh, pro yeah, wrestlers. I, he just runs around the house wrecking shit. Yeah. He, he picks up these weights, yeah. and I'm, it's crazy. He's two, bro. Yeah. And he, uh, I go, you want to go to karate and fight Sensei Davis? And he goes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know like what? That. But by, <laughs> when you and I would go to school and somebody would go, "Hey man, Andrew's looking for you." He said he's gonna fuck you up. Yeah. And then like you fake a stomach ache. And go yeah, off yeah, school. yeah. Or you get out the back. Pass, <laughs> with Fifteen minutes left. You get a bathroom yeah. pass and just walk yeah. home. Like, and I'm like, you know what? As a father, I made the decision. My sons are never gonna know that fear. Yeah. They're gonna go. Where is he? Yeah. Why don't you bring him to me right now and let's yeah. just get the stove with? Because I got schoolwork to do. Yeah. I can't. I'm just getting exactly. Fucked up. You know what? <laughs> there was a. Um, you know, there was a new year. I, can't, I don't want to tell you the comic, but there was a new year that <laughs> that, that we co-headlined. That we co-headlined uh, at the punchline. You know, and uh, and my wife Sacramento? always. My, yeah, Sacramento? yeah, Sacramento. And my wife um, says. Oh, he's so yeah, he's funny. I got it. Yeah, and my wife says. You know, everything that they do is like, um, she wants to take them to the, like, to the west side. I live in Silver Lake, you know, which I don't know if you know, dude, was just voted, um, hippest neighborhood in the nation yeah. by Forbes. That's dude. not something to be proud of. Hey, bro. Hipsters. Hey, come on. I know, but, uh. But you're like the Vato keeping about, it real. That's, yeah. you're, you're, like, you're the crew from hey, the back. Hey, talk the about day. smelling, bro. They smell. Hipsters uh, fucking right? stink they fucking like stink, wolf pussy. Dude. All right. People from Mexico go, what the fuck is that, dude? Yeah. And I don't think me- Mexican people always smell really nice to me. No, no, no. I'm the talking gentleman from Mexico. Got the, they always got the nice eau de cologne. <laughs> so, so, Look, I, you like this? I put on some Bartolo cologne. Hey, hey, bro. So check this out. So I'm working, right? And then um, and, uh, and, and, and uh, my wife always wanted to do everything on the, on the, on the west side. Anything they did, like you know, play, uh, play the violin or whatever. She always, you know what I mean. She yeah. wants to take them on that side, but I always would take them boxing to the east side. Yeah, you know, and then the jujitsu and, and everything. And and I would say they need to have both worlds, man. Well, what's that got to do with the punchline with this comic? Okay, so anyways, so there's this comic, and he goes on stage, and there's a DJ on the side, and he, this guy, he totally dogs the DJ, like makes him feel like like a fucking. This, like tiny man, makes them feel small belittles the, the 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 youngster he goes i will not continue my jokes until you leave and man you could see this guy just shrink and he's got to walk through the audience and even <laughs> and then and there's even like a there's even like a weird vibe and energy with the audience and then he just keeps slamming the kid for no reason so anyway so i go on stage and then 
And I go, look, hey, kid, come back. Sit over here, man. Because he was, it was a New Year's gig. So they're going to play music Aww. when it's over. So I said, hey, kid, sit over here, man. I go, see, he's a... Uh, he doesn't understand, man, that in, 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 a, in, in a Mexican wedding or quinceañera, you always have the DJ on the side. Do you know what I mean? And so the crowd went crazy. They started cheering. Applied, and then I, I told my wife, you see why I want the kids to have both worlds, the 